for coming. Uh, we're scheduled to have uh, Mr. Ron Jaber speak about a topic today, but he had just had the surgery in his hands and he could not make it. And um, as one of the organizers of Dearborn Open Mic, we have this backup lecture, which uh, I've always been looking forward to give it. And now it's the opportunity to really participate with this. It's interesting how we uh, hold so, ma so many things dear to us and close to us that sometimes we don't understand uh, uh, the symbolism behind them or what, what do they mean. And uh, I found that uh, flags usually carry so much uh, sy national symbolism and history into them. And it would be uh, far reaching beyond just understanding the flags to talk about Arab flags. There are many themes uh, that when we understand the Arab flags, it, we will see through the flags into these uh, themes in our history. Now we have about 23 Arabic countries and each flag has its history. I have in this presentation 100 slides by itself, which means if I speak half a minute per slide, uh, that is an hour. So I'm not going to go through the whole presentation, but I'm going through the introduction, some of the symbolism, and then you can decide for yourself you can understand the flags yourself when you see them. Any flag, any Arabic flag you'll see, you'll understand from, from this, uh, some of the introductions. If we have some extra time, then you'll pick a country, and I'll go to it, and we'll talk about its flag in details. So, first of all, symbols. So, uh, before, let's start before Islam. So, before Islam, Arabia, uh, the, the, at that time, in general, flags were not very ornamented. They were not very sophisticated. It was an age of illiteracy. It's narrated that there, there were about 11 people who knew how to read and write in Mecca when Islam came about. So the illiteracy rate was, was very high. And it's, it was not a sign of ignorance, it's just that people dealt in a different medium. So Arabs, they dealt with uh, so, so many uh, oral mediums. So they memorized and they uh, uh, communicated using poetry and prose and they memorized, memorized it in a way that would be uh, not natural to us today, but it was very natural at that time. Um, sorry, I have to turn this on. That's what happens when you when you're on five committees at the same time. <laughs> you mean men can multitask? Oh, 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 <laughs> Not good, oh, as you can see. <laughs> so, um, the flag of Quraysh, basically, the, the tribe from which uh, uh, Islam was born, the, it was mostly a black flag, uh, because the black fiber and the white fiber were the two most common fibers. And uh, uh, there are a type of uh, eagles that lived very specifically in the Gulf area, in the, in the Arabia, that were uh, used for uh, hunting uh, as a sport and a tradition in Arab tribes. So the, this is called Uqab Quraysh. It's a, a type of eagle that was used sometimes, drawn very poorly on the flag as a symbol uh, of Quraysh. That was the only symbol before Islam during uh, that time. Now, uh, when Islam came, Islam came also uh, as a, uh, um, a revolution against paganism. So, uh, wanted to avoid using any kind of symbol that would fall into the same pitfalls of paganism. Uh, did not want to use any objectification of any divinity. So, also stayed away from any symbols. So, the theoretical answer, the theological answer is there's no symbols in Islam. There is no physical symbols in Islam. Nevertheless, sociology will force you to have symbols because it's a human nature to associate images with things. So eventually, uh, people will associate certain symbols like we see today. If I ask you what symbols of Islam, you'll give me a few of them. This is just a natural uh, evolution in society. But Islam as a theory did not present any uh, symbols. So uh, Prophet Muhammad, when he went into battle, so people at that time in battles, they need to have a flag for necessity. So they would have a color fabric, any color available, to symbolize the, the, the army. 
So they would use any fabric available. So they used uh, white, they used black, they used yellow. One time uh, he asked uh, his wife Aisha to give him a part of her scarf, which was black, to hang it. And after the battle is over, they'll just throw away this flag. It has no significance. There was no uh, divinity or anything, uh, holiness or any, you know, uh, respect given to that flag, other than it's just like a, a marker, you know, so you know, Raya or Liwa, you know, like the different divisions of the, of the army. Uh, I want to comment about the flag that is used. I mean, you know this, wh whose flag is this? ISIS. ISIS. You know it now as ISIS flag, they made it popular, but this was kind of the theory for the flag of the Prophet before ISIS, and ISIS took it as their flag and they made it uh, popular. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is a theory that that was the, the, the flag of the Prophet, and I, I looked at history very carefully and it is very difficult to prove uh, this. So first of all, uh, the words La ilaha illallah, uh, there is no God but, but God. This is not the font or letters that were used at that time. Next to it is a copy of the oldest copy of the Quran uh, found. Like yeah, this is the oldest copy of the of the Quran found. It's a, it's a Birmingham Quran manuscript called. It's a parchment on which two leaves of early Quranic manuscripts is written. It is dated back to 568 and between 568 and 645 after Christ, which means between 25 بعد الهجرة, after Hijra to 56 after Hijra, which means like 10 years after the death of the Prophet mm -hmm. up to 30 years. And this is according to the carbon study of this paper. It is accurate up to 95% uh, carbon study. So this is the, like the, 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 the oldest confirmed copy of the Quran. And if you notice the, the Arabic font at that time, there was no Hamza. This is Surah Taha, Ma Anzalna Alayka Quran Al-Tashqa. And there is no Hamza at that time in the font. So this proves that this wasn't really a writing on the flag. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't uh, known to be a writing for a very long time. There were no writing on flags for hundreds of years after that. This is narrated to be the, the khatam of the Prophet, which is the uh, seal. Seal. seal of the Prophet. And uh, the oldest reference to that, to that is the letters, are the letters that he sent to the kings in the year seven of Hijra. And that can be uh, that can be traced back. Anyway, so this is a symbol that can be traced back. It has some historicity to it. Some of these letters are still preserved. They're not 100% authentic, but they're still preserved in certain museums. This is some of the copies of uh, of those letters, and you can see that uh, below there is the a seal of the Prophet, and it is. Uh, this way in the letters, although some people try to claim it's the opposite way. Anyway, mm -hmm. so this is a symbol uh, that showed up again, but uh, Islamically speaking, there is no uh, symbols in Islam. The star and crescent, which we associate today as a symbol in Islam, uh, is actually dates back to 300 before Christ, the first time uh, this uh, started showing up. Uh, more with the Roman Empire. The crescent and star has not been associated with Islam until the Ottoman Empire, very late. Right now, when we associate the crescent and star with Islam, that's a very, very late symbol that was adopted by the Ottomans when they opened Constantinople, Constantinia, Istanbul, when they opened it. When they conquered it, they used that symbol, they adopted that symbol. So you'll see that Sakr of Quraysh, you'll see it uh, on, uh, on Arabic uh, symbols all over the place because it's the oldest Arabic uh, symbol. It was revived by Salah al-Din in the Ayyubi uh, era, the Ayyubi dynasty. He used the same uh, aqab, the same uh, eagle on his flag, which used to be a yellow flag. Of course, what was the prominent flag is yellow. Very rarely you'll find uh, 
Awqab on it. Drawing was not a big thing in the in the Islamic world at that time. There are some references. I'm going to skip them right now and go to colors. So the the known color for the uh, Abbasid, uh, the Umayyad uh, dynasty was the white flag. And then the, Abbas, the Abbasid dynasty, which came after the Umayyad dynasty, they adopted the black flag. And then the, the, Fatim, the, the Fatimid dynasty was a small dynasty within the second Abbasid era. Uh, and it adopted, it was the only Arabic. So after the, the Abbasid era, the only Arabic dynasty was the Fatimi dynasty. That was the last Arabic dynasty, uh, uh, the last Arabic Islamic dynasty, basically. All the other dynasties, and I'm talking about hundreds of dynasties. Sometimes you'll have a hundred dynasties show up in a year. Mm. This is how much the area was unstable after the uh, Mughalian attack on the Islamic world. So uh, none of them were Arab except uh, uh, the Fatimid uh, uh, Empire uh, dynasty. And then the Ottomans came and they late uh, through the game adopted the crescent and the star. Uh, when they took over the Byzantium uh, Empire, that was the symbol of uh, Constantinia, of uh, Istanbul, and they took it over, and they kind of adopted that. Before that, they used only red, uh, just by itself, and sometimes they'd add things depending on the, because it took them about 300 years before they entered into Constantinia. Uh, 